there. Just Colin said it was going to be a possibility, and we have now made that possibility a reality. We now welcome to the program WVSSAC Executive Director David Price. David, thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon, gentlemen. So, Mr. Price, we kind of look, already have talked a little bit about this here uh, at the beginning of the show with the news breaking yesterday about Spring Mills and a an eligible player. Just trying to get, I guess, a lot of clarity around the uh, situation because there's been a lot of rumors circulating. I, I know you probably can't go full into the situation, but how, how much are you able to say from your guys' uh, standpoint, or standpoint, excuse me, about the report? Well, what I can tell you is this, that um, we received a phone call from Spring Mills High School, uh, Associate Executive Director Wayne Ryan, who oversees football, received a phone call on uh, October 30th from Spring Mills Athletic Director Glenn Simpson, uh, reporting that they had identified that they had used an ineligible player uh, up through, I think it was October the 16th, and that student athlete was no longer enrolled at the school as of October 16th, and they notified us on October the 30th. Um, they had been going back and looking at which games that he had participated in, and they had identified uh, four, we or three, excuse me, and we had also had one of our clinicians and a coordinator of uh, Huddle who reviews films for us um, and we identified a fourth game. So there were four games that the student athletes had participated in. Therefore, by rule, they had to forfeit those four games. Can you clarify the eligibility rules? What makes a player ineligible and what well, makes them I, eligible? Yeah, I think a lot of times people think it's just grades, but it's also residence, uh, guardianship, residence transfer. There's a lot of different factors that come into that as well. And, um, uh, we found out that uh, it would be guardianship and residence transfer that played into these two components, and it would get, get further into detail, but uh, which I can't go at this point. But those are the two portions of the rule that um, were um, in play here. See, at the beginning of each season, each or excuse me, each sports season, it is up to each school to verify each athlete's eligibility. Um, you know, everybody thinks the SSAC is Parkersburg. Well, the SSAC is the principal at the school. They are the acting member of the SSAC and represent their school. It's up to them to verify eligibility of every student athlete and to uh, confirm that and submit that uh, on their documents at the beginning of each season. Um, uh, and then they had submitted that. And going back, there were some factors here that uh, – Evidently, uh, uh, there were some issues with uh, early and maybe weren't, uh, were not missed on their part when they submitted it. And we asked for, uh, before making any decisions, I will clarify this, before making any decisions, we asked for all of that information so that we could go through and verify different things, too, before we made a final decision. Uh, this wasn't something that we made on the 30th. Matter of fact, I wasn't even in the office my uh, father had passed away and I was out for his service when all this was going down and when I came back to the office uh, I was trying to get caught up on all this and Mr. Ryan was catching me up and we went through all of the information and they had uh, done all of the things I just spoke about and um, uh, it brought us to our decision uh, yesterday after we spoke to uh, the principal of the school uh, I think something that has been talked about so far early on well before we have any uh, you know, all the information is that uh, this ineligible player wasn't one that played a, a whole lot. When it comes to forfeiting a game for an ineligible player uh, participating, does participating basically just mean that if if, the, if an ineligible player is on the field for one play of a game, then that, that, that constitutes That justifies it? participation, yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say one play, ten plays, one quarter. You know, one play... If you're, are, if you're looking at counting quarters as far as the number of quarters an athlete can play per week or anything in other rules, one play uh, is considered a quarter. Their participation on the field during the competition, uh, dressed and on the sideline, wouldn't, uh, would not count. It could be special in football, it could be special teams, offense, defense, whatever the case may be. Um, it's just participation. 
Okay. I, I know you kind of said earlier that the details behind all this uh, you guys can't really speak on. So uh, I'll kind of just ask, do you know when maybe more details will come out about the situation as a whole from either you guys or from Spring Mills when communicating? You know, I, um, I can't speak to that at this point. But what I know is what I know, and our what we're involved with here would be the um, fact of uh, eligibility. Uh, anything else other than that, we would not be involved in. Are you able to confirm who the ineligible player was? I'm not going to mention any student athletes' okay. names at this time. All right. Anything else, guys? I think we're good. Unless you guys had anything else. Yeah, I think it's. I uh, we I think we appreciate uh, David calling in. I think there's just there's a lot of stuff that can't be talked about right now, but uh, good to get the information that we could. Yeah, and again, keep in mind that um, this student athlete was no longer enrolled at the school on October 16th, uh, according to that's when they were dropped from their enrollment. But this was not reported until October 30th by the school. So, um, you know, there's a gap there that concerned us as well. But at the same time, I know they were doing due diligence to make sure and they self-reported. And um, so, uh, you know, those were things we all we had to consider as well. I believe Nick has one more thing quickly. Mr. Yeah, Price. I, I guess just the only other thing that maybe some people uh, may, I guess, have some sort of issue with is that obviously Spring Mills is an 8-1 and one football team, uh, but now they're going to be 4-5. and five, So how that impacts the playoffs and the fact that teams would have to face a team that probably well, is one of the better teams in the state in the first round, I guess. Well, you know, on that. it... it it does affect, unfortunately, but, um, you know, again, it's not the SSAC's fault that this occurred. We just had to respond to it. And, um, unfortunately, we have to respond in this way. I've noticed uh, in reports that I had, um, you know, uh, fortunately in, uh, for Spring Mills at this point, uh, they're in the quad A classification and based on a prior ruling by the review board that all 16 teams are going to make it to the playoffs. It could have been that if uh, – that weren't the case, it could have knocked them completely out. So, you know, again, there's still a chance. And, yeah, their uh, um, position in the playoffs may have changed, but they're still in. Um, that's the bright side of it all. Uh, it could have changed where they weren't in. And thank goodness that didn't happen to them. But at the same time, you know, I noticed in a couple other states, one of your neighboring areas up there just occurred over in uh, Maryland as well. A team had to forfeit, I think, uh, Seven games, maybe, and but in Maryland, all teams make playoffs. Yes, right? Fort Hill. So, uh, we um, heard that news. Yes. Yeah, and then I just got a notification again this morning. A team in Miami who won several state championships just had to forfeit nine games. So uh, it, it, this isn't unusual around the nation. It occurs, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it happened here. And uh, we don't like things like this, obviously. But uh, you know, rules are in place for a reason, and um, you know you have to follow rules if they're there. It's better to. Uh, uh, you have to follow a rule uh, without question because if you don't follow a rule, then you're picking and choosing what rules you are going to follow. So they're there for a reason. And, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, this occurred late in the year. Uh, we're in uh, week 11 going in. And um, um, in our case, um, you know, two of those schools that Spring Mills played were Maryland schools. And we had to report that to the Maryland uh, group yesterday. And they were getting ready to release playoff uh seedings yesterday at 2 o'clock and we had to contact their office yesterday about 11 so it did uh, change some things for them as well and um, so um, you know it, this isn't what this isn't taken lightly because it doesn't just affect Spring Mills High School it affects 15 other high schools in West Virginia as far as the ratings go and it affects schools outside of the state because Spring Mills does play uh, schools uh, in Maryland, Virginia, and so on. All right, before we let you go, I guess one final question. I don't know if it's a right question or not to ask, but is, is this kind of a self-isolated thing? Do you know if there's any more that just hasn't come out about anybody else, whether at Spring Mills or other schools, I guess, now that this has come to be? Is there any reviews going on around the state to make sure that there's no other mistakes that were made? Right now, as far as eligibility goes, it's the only one that's been reported to us and that we are dealing with as far as ineligible players uh, participating in fall sports. Now, I will say there have been other sports where self-reporting has taken place uh, in soccer. Um, 
Uh, Spring Mills did have a couple of ineligible players participating in soccer early on and self-reported. Um, so, you know, we're dealing with some of that as well. And um, but early, that was early on in the first couple of matches. They had to forfeit a couple games early. Um, so, you know, this is um, not the first time they've dealt with this this year at their school. All right. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Mr. Press. All right. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.